In this video, we're going to be checking out Private GPT, which is an open source project on GitHub that has been blowing up recently because it allows you to chat to your document, but 100% offline. That's right. What I'm about to show you can be done completely offline because it uses local language models on your machine or on your laptop so that you can have 100% private conversations with your documents without ever sending it off to OpenAI or any other company. The reason this GitHub repo is blowing up right now is because of how simple it makes it to install and ingest your own documents into a custom knowledge base and start chatting with them with local models in a matter of minutes. So within this super quick tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to download and install private GPT onto your own machine, ingest your documents, and then start chatting with them in just a few minutes. But before we get started, if you haven't already signed up to my AI newsletter called The Drip, we're giving you the condensed version of all the hottest AI news delivered direct to your inbox every few days. So be sure to head down below in the description in the pinned comment. You can sign up to my AI newsletter if you haven't done that already. So before we actually get into installing it on your machine, let's take a quick look at the GitHub repo. You're going to be available to grab this link in the description. But here we can see private GPT allows us to ask questions on your documents without an internet connection using the power of LLMs. 100% private, no data leaves your execution environment at any point. You can ingest documents and ask questions without an internet connection. Now, for some of you, I've been getting bombarded with questions about local models and running things locally. So I think this is going to make a lot of you very, very happy. So let's have a dive into a few examples that it says here. So the example it gives us here is why was NATO created, etc. Built using Langchain and GPT for all. If you haven't already seen my other GPT for all video, it's going to be linked here or here. I always get it wrong. But basically, they make it super simple for us to set this up. We're going to need to download the entire repo. Then we just can install all the required dependencies using this requirements.txt file. Now, one of the best parts about this repo, in my opinion, is that it has direct download links to the models that you need to use. So you need to click on both of these. You can download them here. If you click on it, it's going to allow you to download both of these models. These are absolutely required. It can't work without downloading them. So make sure you click on both of these and get them downloading here. I've already got them downloaded, so I don't have to do that just now. And another thing that makes this so accessible to beginners is that it has a automatic ingestion script that you can easily run with whatever file you put in so super simple instructions here for how to ingest your own data so this can be pdfs it can be text files but i'm going to show you that when we get started in a second now the end result once we've got this all set up is you're going to be able to enter queries via the terminal and ask questions about your documents locally so let's jump into the installation scrolling back up to the top of the repo here we can click on this code button and then if we go download zip we're going to download the entire repo so that we can start to use it in our own projects once it's downloaded, you're going to need to unzip the file. So you can use your favorite extractor, double click on it. If you're on a Mac, it's going to expand it out to this folder here. I'm going to be running private GPT within VS Code. So you can open that up with me. Or if you have a different IDE, which you like to use, you can use that also. But easy way to open this for Mac users is to click on this folder here and just drag to your applications bar and drop it onto Visual Studio Code. And it's going to open it up. Yes, I trust the authors. Now for Windows users, you can open up Visual Studio Code and head up to this file section here. Just open the app and then you can open folder and then you need to go to your downloads and open the folder that you've just downloaded. As soon as you're into VS Code, you need to add a folder for your model. So we can do that by clicking this folder button up here and go models. And now I need to go to my downloads and drag all of those models that I downloaded, the two different models, and I need to drag them into that models folder. On screen, you can see the two models that I've downloaded. I'm just going to drag them into this models folder and let them copy over to that. With those models copied over correctly, now we can install our required dependencies. So we have this requirements.txt file. We're just going to install everything we need to run this correctly. As you can see back on the GitHub repo here, it has in this environment setup section, a pip install command that's going to install those requirements automatically. So you can copy this command, head back to your terminal that we've just opened up by going new terminal. And then I can paste that command in there and run it. Now, if you get the same error as me here, which is saying command not found pip, you need to actually run pip3 install. So you can paste that in here. We can see pip3 install requirements.txt. Now I can run that. It's going to install all of these dependencies here. And now we're ready to get started. So taking a look onto the left, we actually have a folder here that they've created for us, which is called source documents. So this is where you can put any document that you want to ingest into it. They give us by default the state of the union, which is sort of default lang chain document. We can roll with this one for the purposes of this video. But you can delete this and copy in any document that you want. Say I had a, a different document in my downloads. I could just drag it into that source documents folder and then you could follow these steps along. Just make sure that the name is changed when you're running the command. On the left hand side, if you click on the ingest.py file, you can see that this is going to be using some Langchain document loaders and text splitters, etc. Out of the box, private GPT doesn't actually have support for PDF files. So 
I'm going to have this little code snippet available in the description for you guys to steal, which I've whipped up quickly here, which is going to essentially allow you to put in your own PDF files without first converting them. All it's doing here is doing a little check on what the document type is. If it's a PDF, it's going to use a different document loader from Langchain. But if it's a normal text file, it's going to use the, the normal private GPT document loader. In order to get this little PDF extension enabled, you need to head up to the corner and go on the top row here, we can see a text loader. We just need to add in PI PDF loader as well to the document Langchain document loaders. And now this is going to remove the squiggly line there. What you're also going to need to do is go pip3 or just pip install PI PDF. And then one more line of code that you need to add is actually import OS and then everything should be ready to go and we can start ingesting our documents. Remember to save this file when you're done. Now we can get onto ingesting our documents. If we hop back onto the GitHub repo, we can see the instructions for ingesting our own data set out here. Pretty simple stuff, but we need to run python ingest.py and then a path to our text file. So again, this is using a text file, but we have added support to allow you to use PDFs as well. So if we just copy all of this, I'm going to just pop it into the code down the bottom here just make a little bit of space. I'll show you exactly how you can get this set up. The easiest way to get the path to the exact document that you want is just to right click on it and click copy relative path, and then come here and delete the entire thing here, including the carrots. And now you have the entire command ready to go. I can copy that, head down to my terminal and go Python three. Actually, in my case, I need to change this to Python three. You may need to do the same. And then we can come down, paste this in and ingest it. Now this is going to run in your terminal down here for quite a long time. It's going to go through the entire document, chunking it up and then putting it into this DB folder up here that it creates. And it's going to store your index here so that whenever you ask questions to it, it can ask the DB and recall different chunks out of it. So I don't want to get stuck in the weeds there, but essentially that's where all of your database is going to be stored. Now, after a couple of minutes, that's finally finished indexing that information. So what we have up here is our DB all ready to go and ready to be queried. Now we need to actually run the script, run this private gpt.py app, which is going to actually allow us to chat to that data. What we can do is head back to the GitHub repo here and it's going to show us to run it, ask questions about your documents locally. We just need to run this Python private gpt.py. For me, I'm going to need to run a Python 3. You may need to as well. Python 3 and then paste that in private gpt.py. And we can run that. It's going to look all complicated while it loads these models up. But now it says enter a query. So I can say, I'm talking about the State of the Union here. So what did the president say about NATO? And here we see after a few issues with tokenizing these unknown tokens, it's actually answering the question here, as you can see. Answer, the president has spoken out in support of NATO and his role in maintaining peace and stability in Europe, emphasize importance of alliances, etc. So it also shows us the question that we asked, the answer that it's given, and then source documents as well. So this is actually very handy to see what chunks were used in terms of creating this answer. So I hope you guys have been able to get this working. As you can see, these sort of tokenizing errors pop up quite a lot. You may have different issues depending on the documents that you put in there. Now, given that I've added this little PDF extender so you can use the ingestion script on PDFs as well, you should be able to add in, just drop a PDF in there and run the script and it's going to install it. Just to make this tutorial bulletproof and I know in the couple weeks and months coming up ahead, this may change a little bit, but be sure to check the repo for the latest information on how to install this. It's all going to be available here if it changes. But also, if you run into errors in the terminal window here, it can help to just copy and paste it into ChatGPT and ask it for an answer. It might be a very, very simple fix that you can do yourself without having to ask for help for anyone else. So that's about it for the video, guys. I wanted to make this super short and sweet so that you can download this repo, have a play around with it and start chatting to your documents locally without any internet connection. Now, if you do have any issues with this and want some help, you can join my AI Entrepreneurship Discord, which is in the description and in the pinned comment. You can hop in there and ask some of the developers within the community if you can get a little bit of help with this. But beyond that, if you also want to reach out to me as a consultant and work on any projects like this or other AI applications, you can book a consulting call with me in the description and in the pinned comment. And if you want to work with my development company to build out something bigger, then you can also get in touch with me through my consulting link. That's all for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit down below and leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content exactly like this. And I will see you in the next one.